Hey, Marcus Hutzel here. And in this video, I'm going to edit the headshot photos that I talked about in the video where I, I explained kind of how I did this process, uh, the fact that I don't do headshots for a living, uh, but that I was proud of those results. And in that video, I mentioned how easy they were to edit because of the lighting and how I got everything right. And uh, a few of the settings I used on my Sony camera that made the edit a little easier. So without any further ado, I'm just gonna jump right into the edit and you're going to have to forgive me because I actually didn't take my own headshot that day. I had one previously that I was happy with. So all the shots of me here are test shots. So my hair is a little tousled there, uh, what little hair I have. All right, so as I said on the other video, my final camera settings landed on one one hundredth of a second at f5, ISO 1000. And in this shot, you do see the tripod, but even though the tripod's in this shot and the camera frame isn't filled with white because I had the tripod there, I'm gonna use this shot because it's at the right settings and I have not done anything to this photo. This is exactly how it came out of the camera. And to me, it already looks great. So we're gonna start with this one and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go into crop mode and I am gonna go ahead and crop this to square. So let's go one to one here. Let's go ahead and crop it and just get that tripod out of the frame. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to get the background 100% white so that there's no gradients. You can't see any of these wrinkles back here. I just want it completely white. It'll be easier to expand it and, uh, and or change it later. So the way I did that in Lightroom, I'm using you know Adobe's newest and greatest technology is I'm going to select a subject and hopefully it will find me. Uh, so I'm gonna press the letter K and that brings up the mask tool. Now I can either draw a mask or I can do a, a linear mask like that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go up here to create mask and I'm going to choose select subject. And right then and there, you can see that it found me. It found the outline of me and I'm selected. But I actually want to select the inverse of this because I don't want to edit me or the subject, I actually want to edit the background. So we'll go over here, we'll make sure our mask is selected. We're going to go click on invert. And now the mask is inverted. So now whatever changes we make will actually edit everything but me. So therefore the background. And you can see it's a little pink right now because I have the overlay on it. If you want to turn that off into the letter O, you can turn that on and off so you can see what it's affecting, but you actually can't see the real changes unless you turn the overlay off. So in mask mode, we know we've got our mask selected and then I'm going to hit the letter J. What the letter J does is that it turns anything that's 100% white in Lightroom, it'll turn it red so you can see that it's 100% white and it will also turn anything that's 100% black to blue. And we can see right here that the um, kind of the dark parts of the image are blue because they are completely 100% black or 0% white. But I don't see any red yet, which means nothing in this image is 100% white. So with our mask selected there on the background. I'll turn off the overlay. I'm just going to start increasing the exposure, which will start increasing the exposure only on the mask. And there we can see the white come in. So we know everything behind me now is starting to be 100% white. And you could just keep going all the way and just get it all completely white using the exposure tool. But this is assuming that Lightroom has created a really good mask around me, depending on the person, what other things they have going on, uh, maybe with their clothing or their hair. If they have a little bit more hair uh, that's thin off the edge of their body, the mask can get weird, especially when you start making drastic changes to that mask. So on me, it's generally okay. And if I press the letter J, it will turn off that white black view. And let's zoom in here a little bit. And then what we can do is actually turn the mask off to see if it altered the edges. And on me, it looks okay. The edges uh, are, are pretty good. So I could just do that and be done as long as the edges of the body around the ears, around the hair looks acceptable. What's acceptable depends on you and the person in the photo. Now, one more important thing that I do or do not do here is that once I've gotten that background pure white, I don't make global adjustments at that point. And what I mean by that is, let's say we've got my picture here. I've got my mask. It's pure white. If I make adjustments here, I'll go ahead and turn the, uh, the, the white back on. Let's say I want to make my face or my overall body, let's say it's too bright and I want to turn down the exposure on my face. Well, if I do that as a global exposure, it starts to turn down 
everything in the image, including the pure white background that we just got to be pure white at 100% exposure. So I'm going to reset that. So I will always do another mask and just mask out myself again. So let's do that, select subject. There we go. Now I've got two masks. The first one that we inverted so we can uh, edit the background. The second one is the mask of me so that I can now make adjustments to myself without affecting the background. So there we've got me selected. I won't invert it this time. Uh, we'll turn off the overlay and we'll turn off the pure white uh, view there. And now I can make adjustments that will only affect, you know, me and not the background. So if I turn back on that J view to show the pure white, but I've got my mask selected of just me, if I underexpose it, you can see it's no longer affecting the background. So for me, that was very important in these edits to make two masks on most people. So that again, if I need to change the color of someone's skin tone, I can do that again without affecting the background. Let's go to another person here. This is Taylor. And I wanted to show you the difference between the raw image and the JPEG image. This is the raw image, looks just fine. Go to the JPEG. The JPEG is actually on Taylor here, a little less saturated, but let's flip back and forth. There's the JPEG, there's the raw. You can see you just get more texture in skin because it is the raw image. Let's flip back to the JPEG real quick. And you can see with that soft skin effect that I had uh, enabled on the Sony a7 IV, the skin's already a little soft. And if I were to use the raw image, you can see a little bit more noise, you can see more texture in the skin, and depending on how the person wants to use the photo, I would probably soften this photo up a little bit anyway. So I'll go back to the JPEG. I'm just gonna start by using the JPEG. I think it looks great. I think this particular image is a little undersaturated for his skin tones, but let's start at the beginning. I'm going to select the letter R, that'll take me into crop mode. I'll go up to one to one, make sure it's square, center him up a little bit. I will hit the letter K for my mask tool bring up select subject. It found him right away, but again, we're going to invert that mask up here in the top right so that I'm affecting the background only. We see pink, not red. That's because the overlay of the mask is on so I can see where the mask is. Let's turn the overlay off and then let's hit the letter J. And you can see right away with uh, this image, there was already some amount of the backdrop behind him that was overexposed where I want it 100% white. So now I'm just going to start increasing this and on some of these images, you can see that the overexposed area behind him is not centered on his body. So in some of these images, I stopped there with the exposure tool on the mask. And then at times I would add another mask. So let's add a linear mask up here and we'll turn off the overlay. And then instead of increasing the exposure on just the mask that's on the backdrop, I can selectively choose the areas that I want to continue overexposing. So I'm gonna go here because now I don't need to affect anything else around his body because the red from the original mask is already completely around all of his body. So I don't want to keep increasing the exposure here because it might affect how hard that mask cuts off parts of his hair or his ears or anywhere else in the photo I don't want it to cut off. So I'll go back to my linear mask for just that upper right-hand corner and I'll just increase the exposure there. Again, this won't affect anything to the bottom left since it's a linear mask. It only affects the upper right and that's the only part of the image I need to adjust at this point. So let's go ahead and add another linear mask down here in the corner, turn off the overlay. Now I'm only affecting that bottom right corner, done. I'll do one more linear mask up here, turn off the overlay and we'll just increase the exposure there and now if I turn off all my masks, we have Mr. Taylor here with a 100% white background behind him. I'll hit the letter J to turn that off. And there's almost a finished photo. So now that we've gotten Taylor's background to be pure white, I'll go ahead and make a new mask, select him again. Now we can make adjustments to just him. If we need to expose him more or less, uh, bring up or down the shadows, make his shirt a little brighter or something like that. And of course on that mask where just the subject is selected is where I would then make any sort of adjustments to fix skin tones or color again, so it doesn't affect that white background. If there were anything on people's faces that may not be there in a few weeks, 
then I might get rid of it. And the way I get rid of little blemishes or specks of dust on people's shirt in Lightroom is by using the patch tool. So I'm gonna zoom in first, and then you press the letter Q to bring up this little Band-Aid icon, and you can make your mouse smaller or larger to uh, grab a smaller or larger portion of the image. So let's take this little uh, mole or something on my cheek there. We'll make it just the size of that area. I will click and then Lightroom will find something else that it thinks looks similar enough for the rest of my face to patch it with and it takes that away. That is what I use here in Lightroom to take care of small blemishes. We'll do it once again here on my shirt, a little speck of dust and it will take care of that usually quite nicely. But generally, I wouldn't get rid of anything that is permanently there. If I had maybe a temporary blemish, then I might get rid of that, something that wouldn't be there a couple of weeks after I took this photo. Yes, I might get rid of that on myself or on someone else. There's a little bit of a, maybe a hair here on the tip of my nose, so I'll hit the letter Q, grab that, and maybe get rid of that. In this shot of Mr. Taylor, I can see a little piece of white fuzz right there, so I'm gonna hit Q and grab the little patch tool. I will make that as small as possible. I'll hit that. It will pick a spot and basically cover up that white spot. It's gone. We'll grab this other little white spot. It may even be hard to see on your screen. It's so small, but uh, I want to be as detailed as I could. And there, those little white spots are gone. So if I go back and forth between before and after, you can see those two little white spots by the Nike logo, and they're now gone. I just didn't want any of those little things to show up. And depending on the person, you can always give it a little bit of noise reduction here. There you go. And I may have done that on some of the photos, but in this example, I didn't want to get too detailed to keep this video kind of short so you can see how easy it is if you get your exposure right to make these edits in Lightroom. So that's pretty much it. These edits went very quickly. I'm very happy that Adobe Lightroom is able now to pick out a subject very well. I did utilize that tool in there. It was very, very helpful, but getting everything right to begin with during the photo shoot was actually a lot better because that means I really didn't have to do a lot of editing. I got the background overexposed and really beyond that, other than taking care of a few of those little blemishes, I really didn't do much editing. The soft skin effect with the Sony camera softened the skin enough to where I didn't really have to mess with that. The photos just looked great overall. I just didn't have to do much to them. And I just wanted to share this here. So I hope some of this has helped you or been entertaining at least, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.